Okay, it's me again. It's time to get down dirty with Xbox One. So, from what we've heard and what we've said, I've come to the conclusion that uh, Xbox One's trades will be handled by GameStop. It's inevitable. Uh, Tony B, from the beginning, has said, or I don't even remember who is, whatever, I'm a follow, but at the beginning, people will notice the Xbox. And they came out again the other day and said, don't worry people, you will be able to trade your games in for the Xbox One and the PS4. Uh, I don't see, oh my God, get out of here. I don't see why they would say anything like that unless they had a piece of the pie. Why would they support a system that they're not gonna get a piece of it? So let's get down and see how that's gonna handle. Uh, we all know the Xbox games, or for the Xbox One, are on disc, but they're not really on disc. The discs are just used as a distribution uh, way because online is not where we can do it yet. We don't have the speeds to be able to download all those. I mean, imagine Halo 5 comes out, everybody's on there trying to download that game. Uh, we're just going to crash everything, and everybody's internet speed is totally different. Some people might be able to play Halo 1 next week. The week after it comes out if we have to download it so the easy way right now until internet speeds get picked up is to have this disc which is really not anything it's not the way discs have been it's it's essentially it's like how PCs have always had it uh, so um, your disc or your game I'm not gonna say your disc your game is gonna be tied to your account uh, so essentially you put it on and you do have to be connected online I mean even a single player game you have to register your disk, your account, and there's only one way to do that. It's going to be to sign online. So if you guys don't have online at your house, or you plan on not having online, uh, Xbox One is definitely not going to be the system for you. I mean, I know money might get tight. You might have to decide between feeding your kids or having internet so that you can play your Xbox, which you spent thousands of dollars on. But uh, let me think here. I think obviously the most important thing is to be able to play your Xbox and all your games. So tell your kid to get some food elsewhere. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but alright, so you have this game linked to your account. Well, now that GameStop is going to be involved, you're going to end up uh, going to GameStop. Or it might even be virtually, but I think initially it'll be you'll be able to go to GameStop and you will be able to trade your game in. I don't think you'll even need the disc. What, what I think is our systems at GameStop will have the ability to go into your gamer tag and essentially take the rights from your uh account and then all of a sudden we'll have one pre-owned digital game at our store uh, that we can sell and it will be interesting because we won't really need a disc so any store will be able to sell that pre-owned copy the instant that it has arrived. Now this online fee, I, I don't know why they don't just say it, it is an online pass and uh, the online pass is somewhat misleading because why do you need an online pass for a single player game? Yeah, the games are going to evolve and get all good, but be honest, dude. How many people, once you beat a game, I mean, I do, but how many people, once you beat a game, go back and uh, play the DLC and whatnot? Now, like a Bioshock, an amazing single player game, and an amazing storyline, I can't wait for that stuff come, to come out. But Tomb Raider, what is the freaking DLC? Uh, it's multiplayer. Wow, what what a horrible decision for that. But all right, so you're gonna have the online pass or whatever they call the online fee. Now, GameStop already like with the online uh, pass is just like when it's the game's pre-owned, they've kind of lowered the price under what they would normally sell to kind of uh, suck in some of the costs or take some of the costs away from the consumer. So what I assume is uh, it GameStop will do the same and then. Uh, the online fee will probably be uh, each company, I would think, publisher would decide what their online fee would be uh, for each individual game. So they'll make profit on the initial game that they sell, and then if the game that is pre-owned sells, uh, they'll have that fee to be able to connect it online. And I can't see that fee being more than $10. Uh, if it is, then it's really just an absurd amount of money. Uh, so at least they get a piece of the pie, and there's there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with them because I mean they put all that work into that game, and yes, they should get what's rightfully theirs. But the whole thing is, if people don't have the ability to trade in games, they're not going to be buying as many games, uh, and uh, 
that was one of my biggest concerns is if you don't have that value of your trade you're gonna you're gonna just destroy the whole game industry altogether uh, especially from the console standpoint I mean so many parents uh, so many families trading all their stuff just so they can get that new game and it's not they're not trading in just to get pre-owned uh, definitely trading out I don't know the statistics but I would say a third of most of like the big launch titles I'd say a third of them are paid with trade it might even be more than that but uh so yeah trade is definitely an important thing uh, and I think that's how it's gonna run but for me uh, this whole digital thing this is like we're at a segue here this is essentially uh, the next generation is not gonna have discs the next generation is not and unless we prove I'm sure we will prove that uh, trades are important to the industry and they might still try to keep that format but uh, if, the, if you're a consumer and uh, you if you if you're okay with buying these digital games which have no value and they're not yours you can't do with whatever you please with I mean I could take my Super Mario Brothers from my Nintendo I could take it anywhere anytime play it let anybody play it uh, with this new stuff you're not going to be able to do that I mean there's going to be so many things and Microsoft is like yeah we're we're down we're here to support it uh, and they're they're initially fooling everybody because yeah consumers let me because a lot of people do need to know all right the, yeah this is a disc that you have because I, I deal with consumers on a daily basis this is a disc in Xbox 360 and then the PlayStation 3 the game is on here. You can play this on your disc. You can go to your Uncle Jimmy's house. You can play it on his system. You can do whatever you want with it. And it is yours. On the next console, the Xbox One, this is this is not yours. This is just a, a physical disc to help distribute their game to you. It doesn't... You can't play this game anywhere. It, it, this disc is fake. This is essentially what PC gaming has been doing for years now. Uh, the only thing that's going to be different in some uh, f form is that you're going to have the ability to trade with GameStop. Uh, and if you're okay with that, I would say, well, why even use Xbox One? Go to the PC. They've been doing it for years. They've been doing it better. They have a structured uh, model with uh, Steam. I mean, GameStop has downloads. Origin has downloads. You can get the games way cheaper. Uh, I, I mean, obviously, sometimes you have to wait for games, but... I know the PC initially is more expensive to get into that. If you're gonna buy a PC that you know is gonna be able to handle the games for years to come, and you're gonna constantly have to upgrade, but I don't see why would you want to do it. I mean, console gaming has always been simple, easy. You stick your disc in, you play. You get online with your friends, which has been a new innovation, and you play. Uh, there's none of this. Your graphics card isn't ready, and this and that. And, or your digital, you've always been able to, hey, you can borrow this, you can borrow that. I mean, it's, it's, you're, they, they want to say, yeah, you can let your friends play. But dude, be honest. Do you want someone else to have your account, access to your account so they can play your game? I mean, that's, I trust my friend with my disc, and I've had lots of my games stolen. Because, I, I mean, NHL 1994, for the second instance, I let someone borrow, gone, swiped. I mean, game, people are shady. I've, I've lost... Uh, two copies of Super Street Fighter. I mean, going to tournaments and whatnot. People are shady. But uh, I'm not going to trust someone with my account to play my game. So essentially, you're really not going to let people borrow your game. Uh, it's, just, it's just wrong. Uh, so I think if you're willing to accept this, then so be it. But I, I think this is time for us consumers because we have the power. We don't shouldn't let them say, hey... Uh, this is what we want to do because the next console thing is not even going to have a disc. It's going to have just the games. And then what's funny is I don't think Microsoft's going to support any any sort of uh, what do you want to call it digital content. I mean they've they've already proven it doesn't. They don't uh, like iPhones. I all the i devices. If you download something or whatnot, you can transfer it to your new device. Microsoft already just with the. Uh, all right, I understand not being backwards compatible with your disc games, but dude, what about your arcade games? How much money have you spent on your Xbox 360 arcade games? I mean, you can just look at my my list of games, and 
yeah, I have a lot of games I haven't played yet. Uh, hopefully, I have a good camera. But it's like, dude, I just go boom, boom. All these games, and there's a couple demos, but not really many. I bought all of these, all of this. It's absurd, like how much money I've spent on this, and I can't do anything when I'm done. So I did see an interesting title here. So I go, you see Streets of Rage 2? Okay. I bought this on the Sega Genesis for, I don't know, maybe 50 or 60, and I downloaded on this for 400 maybe if it was on sale, or 800 points when it first came out. And then I go over here, and I bought the Streets of Rage uh, combo pack, which is the first one, the second one, and the third one. So essentially, I'm giving, and there's nothing wrong, Sega, with you doing and making your money, but on, what am I going to do on Xbox One? Am I going to re-download Streets of Rage again? I mean, come on. If you're going to do this digital era, you have to support it, right? You have to put all the game. You got to give us our games. I mean, how much more money do I need to give this publisher for this game? I mean, I've already bought three versions of it. <laughs> come on. Get, let's get real. <laughs> and the next thing is, if they're not going to support that, all those games that you download on your Xbox One, you're gonna, your system's going to be bricked. Because put it this way, 15 years from now, they're probably not going to have a thing that you can sign on to your server to verify that you own these games. So we go to my collection, partial of my collection, the Street Fighter game, Super Street Fighter Tekken, I spent 60 bucks on. Damn, let me make sure I'm getting it. Oh, all right, sorry. This Street Fighter game, Street Fighter Cross second game, I spent 60 bucks. Bam. Kai Katana, bam, I don't know, 40, we'll just, I mean, just bring the camera down, oh, I see the light's not good enough, I uh, hate shooting videos, <laughs> alright, to get a, obviously, I can show, you can see all the games that I have down there, we'll just go over, all those games, I, my guesstimate is at least $600 worth of games, probably way more than 600 because every 10 would be 60 I would say over $1,000 with the games I have here. And then I can go into this cabinet and look at how many more games I've purchased. And you probably can't see any of them. I'm sorry, it's dark. But the long story short, the long story short is you spent all that money on all those games are going to be on Xbox One, which are going to be digital. No, the discs don't mean anything. They're just digital copies. And Microsoft hasn't given us any word of, hey, you download this, you'll be able to use this for your life. No, they haven't. They said you have to sign in so we, we can verify that you own these games. <laughs> it's just so many people that they're going to be harming. I mean, the, uh, the competitive scene, I mean, being, being, half to being signed online to play. I mean, it's just like so many places, like there's so much limited internet connection. You're just going to ruin everything. Uh, I'm just done. I, I mean... I care, but I'm so burnt out from all this mess that I just don't even care anymore. I mean, <laughs> it's like, whatever, and businesses are getting shadier and shadier, trying to make more and more money and caring less and less about the people. But, all right, that's it. I'm done. I'm done complaining and losing sleep over this, I guess. Uh, it's up to you guys. If you want to make a stand and stop this. You can always, there's options, you can buy and you let them know. We can do Blackout Xbox Live one day, show them, hey, we don't we don't want this anymore. There's always so many different things that we can do, but uh, I got to see the feedback and interest from you guys. So I'm going to post this and I'm going to go to work and sell some Wii U's, get people pumped for PS4. And I mean, if people want Xbox One, I'm, I'm gonna, I got to let them have what they want. But I, I hope that you guys don't want it, and you guys will show support, support, <laughs> support, and stand up. All right. Peace, people. Peace.